Hey guys, welcome back to Magic TV. My name's Craig. It is, uh, it's nine o'clock on a Monday. It's time for a five by five. Now, this is where I take five subjects related to magic. I spend five minutes talking about each subject. I then move on to another subject. It's quick, it's snappy. You never know what you're going to get. And recently I did a video on SEO. I talked about the basics of SEO for beginners. SEO, search engine optimization. How to actually make your website rank online so that people can find you and, uh, and people know where you are. If you haven't seen that, go back and check it out. Very, very important part of running a business, SEO. Anyway, a lot of people said that they really like the content uh, when I talk about um, about business. And although I don't plan on doing many business videos, um, I thought I'd do another one and see if the response to this was just as good. So the last, the last video I did was on SEO. This video is actually going to be, I've got notes here. Uh, as you can see, I'm still in LA. I'm trying to get a jump because next week I'm going to be very busy when I'm back in the UK. Um, this uh, video is five things that you can do to get more gigs for free. So five things that you can do within your business that will generate you more gigs. And you won't even have to do spend money. You won't even have to spend money. No money at all. Uh, because that's the biggest concern, right? A lot of people say, well, I want to be a professional magician, but I've got no money. Um, you know, you need working capital to start a business. How am I supposed to start a business? How am I supposed to market myself when I don't have any cash? Well, these are a few ideas that you might like. I've made some notes here. So without further ado, this week's 5x5, five five, all about marketing and business ideas that you can use to generate more gigs and you won't even have to spend a penny. Okay, so the first piece of advice I could give you is understand and improve your digital footprint. Now, I briefly spoke about this on the SEO video before, but your digital footprint is the single most important part of your business. Now, what do I mean by digital footprint? Well, basically, when I talk about a digital footprint, I talk about what people find when they search you, what people find when they look for you online. Because here's the thing, in these days, this is not like 10 or 15 years ago, this isn't like 20 years ago. 20 years ago, all you had to do was put a decent sized advert in the yellow pages and wait for the, uh, wait for the gigs to come rolling in. That's all you had to do. These days, not so much. So what you have to understand is that these days, people will research into you. If you think about anything that you've ever bought, if you think about anything that you've ever done, there's a very good chance that you researched into it to a certain degree beforehand. You know, if you've found, you, you want a pair of jeans and you found this pair of jeans, you've probably looked for reviews on it. I know my wife, when we go out for a meal, she'll look at the uh, reviews of the restaurant we're going to, she'll look at the hygiene rating, um, I, uh, there's a very good bet that people watching this, when they buy a magic trick, they're going to check out people like me, like Magic Orthodoxy, like uh, uh, Real Magic, Steve Faulkner. They're going to check out people like that and see what the reviews are. They're going to look on the Magic Cafe. They're going to ask questions on Facebook. This is the this is the age that we live in now. People will research into you. So if somebody's looking for a magician, or let's say you're pitching somebody, let's say you've got into a restaurant and you've said to that restaurant owner, hey, you should have me to come into your restaurant and show magic to you. They're going to do some research into you. Now, when they do that research, what are they going to find out about you? Because here's the thing. You see a lot of people that are new into magic. They haven't got a website. Uh, not only have they not got a website, they don't really have social media or maybe they've set the social media up, but they don't post on it. They've got no reviews. They're not anywhere, right? So let, put yourself in the mindset of somebody wanting to hire a magician for a barbecue. They're having a barbecue, they've got 40 or 50 friends coming round and they want a magician to mingle around a couple of hours. And they've done research and somehow your name has come up. They've done some researches into magicians, close-up magicians in their area. Your name has come up along with a bunch of other people's names. What makes you stand out against your competition? What is it that makes you stand out or at least compete with your competition? Because if they do some research into you and you've got no reviews and you've got no social media or your website is non-existent or if it is there, it's just like a one page uh, snooze fest or something like that. Why would people book you over somebody else? Um, if, you, if price is the same, right? Um, or even if this person is more expensive, if, if price, take price out of the equation for a second. If people are comparing two people, you want to come across 
as more favorably desirable than the person you're competing against, right? So how do you do that? Well, that's what I talk about. You want to think about your digital footprint. You want to think about what you look like online. So when they search you up, are they going to find reviews um, of you? Do, do you? do you have a review site? Are regular reviews going on that review site? Telling people how amazing you are, you know, because the thing is, I see a lot of magicians and if they have got a website, they have that paid reviews and then they type on there a bunch of reviews off different people. And the problem with that is it looks fake. They know that they might not be real reviews. You could, any, you could have typed anything and made a name up for all you care. But if a review appears on Google, if a review appears on Facebook, if a review appears on Trustpilot or somewhere like that, well, now they're more likely to um, take it for real because they know that that's a real accredited, trusted review site and you can't fake those reviews, right? The other thing is, if you type in your name, whatever your name is, Boris Davison, magician, and your area, if you've got reviews on Facebook or Google um, or, um, um, uh, you know, Trustpilot or somewhere like that, they'll show up on page one and you'll see the little five stars next to it, right? Um, it's why I always suggest people have a, a, a Google My Business listing. They're free to set up. If you haven't got one, you should do. You're claiming your digital space on Google and you can upload photos on there. You can upload content on there. You can get people to review you on there. All of this is very important. So how you look online uh, when it comes to reviews, but also to social media. You know, let's say that you're putting yourself out there as an amazing close-up magician, but then they go on your Instagram and you put one picture up six months ago of you in a silly hat and then another picture up a year ago of you um, just getting to a venue who why are they going to book you compared to that other person that's constantly putting videos up and performance footage you know you need to be that person if you're running a business if you want a magic business then you have to take this seriously and you have to make sure that your digital footprint is amazing you really do um and 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 it doesn't cost you anything to constantly post on social media or to create content or to think about your review strategy or to register for free listings and, and, and have people leave reviews there. It doesn't take anything other than time, but having that digital footprint is important because when people look into you, you don't want to lose the gig. You've done the hard work. You've, they've found your name out. Now you need to secure the gig and you do that by making sure that you look like the best person for the job. Okay, so number two, um, uh, the second thing that you can do is get lots of photos, and I've put in brackets here, the correct ones. You wanna have as many photos of you, as you can. Now, um, you know, if you're new and you haven't got a, uh, um, you know, you haven't got a website yet, you wanna plaster that website with photos. And when I say the correct ones, I mean the correct ones. Uh, I go, I, I look at some people's um, websites, and they have on there mainly pictures of themselves looking moody or holding a pack of cards or cards are raining down on their head or something. And, and it's all pictures of you. It's pictures of the magician. Well, these photos, the reason for these photos appearing on your website or appearing on your social media or having it emailed out to people, whatever it is that you're doing, the reason for these photos is to paint pictures. Your job as somebody who's trying to sell that potential client on you as an act is to paint pictures, make them imagine their event with you there. And you need to be the person that identifies all of the problems that they have because everybody has a problem. The, the reason they're contacting you is because they've perceived that maybe their event isn't gonna be that interesting or that there's a period of time where they need to focus more on getting people interested in what they're doing and they're, they wanna hire a magician to do that, right? So you, your job is to paint pictures in their head and make make them think about their event with you there. And, and the way you do that is by having photos of people People reacting to your magic. That's what you want to do. You want to have people reacting to your magic, like going, oh, wow, wow, and you want to have millions of those. I generally work on the uh, the, 
the 80-20% rule when it comes to a person's website, which means that 80% of the photos should be of the guests reacting to your magic and 20% should be of you because people are going to find it far more interesting looking at pictures of people reacting. Um, you don't want and 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 you don't want to have just pictures of you, pictures of you, pictures of you. But you want to make sure that the pictures are the right type of pictures as well. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, what I mean by that, simply put, is is that um, if you're billing yourself as a corporate magician, for example, and you're going to focus on trying to get corporate bookings, having you uh, performing at a kids' party or a house party where there's loads of kids running around no matter how good the reactions are, they're not going to be what that person's looking for. Because I don't know what it is, the statistic exactly, but most people will get onto a website and click off within a couple of seconds. Your job is to get them to click onto the website and make them interested enough that they stick there and look into you. And, and the photos do this, which is why when you go onto the website initially, you've got something called above the fold. Now, what that means is that any... Uh, anything that people see when they first go on that website is called above the fold. When they scroll down, it's below the fold. That above the fold space is, is prime real estate. That's where you want every single person, you need to grab their attention there. This is where you need your hero images and people going crazy. But like I say, you need to have the right type of thing. So if you're a wedding magician, if you're billing yourself as a wedding magician, you want pictures of brides and grooms and groom bridesmaids and uh, groomsmen and, and, and wedding venues with lots of guests around losing their mind. And that's what you want. So think about the photos and, and load your website and load your social media up with tons and tons and tons and tons and tons of photos. Um, and if you haven't got many photos, there's no harm in going out and doing gigs uh, for free. Go to a charity event. Uh, go to a charity and say, look, I want to perform for free at your charity. Um, I, you've got that. Go, go and research into charity events. And you'll find that people, various charities in your area are holding gala dinners all the time. Contact them and say, look, I'm a magician in your area. I'm happy to come along for free. It's a charity I really believe in. Um, but I'd like to bring a photographer with me to take photos of me performing magic to your guests. Um, I will give you all the photos as well, even though I'm paying the photographer. Um, and then hire a guy or get a friend to come along with a camera and just shoot loads of pictures constantly. And pictures are very, very important, both loaded up regularly on social media and also on your website. Okay, the next point that I want to make is have a showreel in place. Um, as important as photos are, and they are important, it's even more important to have a showreel. Um, because if you, again, it comes back to what I said in point one, you want to think about how you look compared to your competition. And if you don't have a showreel and your competitor does, and you're this person that's wanting to book a magician for a particular event and they've rounded it off to two or three people and one person has a showreel and the other couple don't, normally, 99 times out of 100, they're going to go for the people that have a, the person that has a showreel. Because a well-edited showreel will show them exactly what it is that they're looking for. People losing their mind, people having a good time, people enjoying themselves. Now, you want to make sure it's the right type of showreel. You don't want to have, like, um, just... You don't want to just have videos to you to camera you know i've seen show reels in the past where people are just like doing magic to camera themselves and they're not doing magic out and about to anybody it's just to the, just to the camera that's not a great way of doing it you want to show that you are again just like photos you want to have this show reel ideally in an environment in which you are going to be performing um, um think about your ideal clients and shoot that show reel there. So if you're wanting to go mainly after corporate people, then then shoot the showreel in an environment that looks like a corporate uh, environment. But having a showreel is so important. And don't make it too long. Don't make it too long. Don't make it like five, six minutes. I did that in the early days. And it, it, people turn off. They don't want to know. You want just like a couple of minutes, a very short showreel that shows them everything that... Um, they need to know. That's it, really. Um, but honestly, and you don't have to... Right, here's the thing. There's a couple of ways of doing this very cheaply or even for free. The first way to do it for free is to um, get a friend and that's got an iPhone, 
because iPhones are amazing and you can film so much on an iPhone. Uh, get an iPhone uh, or whatever and, and have a friend. Go, go out into town, go out into like your local city and, and get some, go into a bar and get some live. I'll tell you right now, I'll tell you something right now. Uh, Cube 52, go back and watch the trailer for Cube 52 and go and look at the reactions that people had from the magic that I did on Cube 52. Most of that footage was shot in, in, in uh, a bar in Manchester. Uh, and the reason is we didn't really get performance footage. We forgot. We got everything else. We didn't get performance footage. And Lloyd told me they didn't have performance footage. So I asked Nemed, my friend Nemed. Uh, now, I'm lucky because Nemed is an incredible videographer and has all of the equipment. But I said to Nemed, look, come with me to Manchester. I'll buy you dinner. And, and, and help me get the performance footage for uh, Cube 52. And he said, yeah. So all of that footage was shot in an afternoon in Manchester. We just went out to Manchester, shot a bunch of footage, and that's what made the Cube 52 trailer. Uh, it's not like uh, it, was, it was shot. And that would be brilliant on a showreel. That footage would be amazing on a showreel, right? Absolutely amazing on a showreel. So, um, yeah. So the first way to do it is to go and get a friend go somewhere like a bar or a restaurant because I'm saying it should be in the area in which you want to compete which it should be but it's better having a video than no video so just go to a bar I just walked into the bar and I was like hey I'm filming uh I'm filming for TikTok and Instagram you know can you uh can, can I come in and film in your bar and they were like show me a trick and I was like yeah of course and they were like oh that's amazing yeah coming in and I just spent like two or three hours in this bar and I was just got all the footage that I need to get it's not a hard thing to do for free then you go back and you get some free editing software some of the free software that you can get these days is amazing if you've got a Mac it comes with uh iMovie uh and now I use Final Cut Pro but iMovie is really good um, and you can do a decent showreel with that, right? And go on YouTube and learn how to use it. Watch some videos teaching you how to use it and then do it. You know, upskill yourself. Go out and learn the skills that you need to put a showreel together yourself. You don't need to spend a fortune on a showreel. Just get a mate that can come and film you, get the footage and learn how to use some free editing software. Or go to a university from somebody that's on a film class and hire them, give them 50 quid to make you a showreel. And they'll absolutely love that. And it'll be really, really good. And you know they'll love the chance of doing something like that. There's a lot of different options, but ultimately the most important thing is get a showreel. Okay, point number four. Um, the fourth point is, is start business networking. Now, eventually you're gonna have to pay for this at people at places like BNI and Four Networking. There's a bunch of different networking organizations that you go to on a regular basis that you'll have to pay for. But initially, there's a load of free networking places that you can go to, or you pay 10 pounds to get a breakfast and that's that. Um, networking is the way that I grew my business initially. Um, I started off of uh, BNI, well, I started off doing free networking then I went to BNI, Business Networking International. Then I went to Four Networking. And I haven't networked for a few years. And the only reason is, from my point of view, networking works best when it's a local thing, right? So, um, you know, like, because when you go networking, you build up a tribe of people. It's almost like having your own sales team. But when you become a national company, like I run a national company, Networking doesn't work as well because there's other methods that will work better. But when I first set up my business, oh, absolutely, 100% for sure, I ran networking. Now, what networking is basically is you go to an event and you meet other business owners and you talk to them about their business. They talk to you about your business. You swap business cards and then you try to have referrals. You try to arrange um, you know, you try to find people that might want their business and likewise they try to find people that might want your business. And basically that's what networking is. And like I say, eventually you want to do B&I or something like that. But initially you just search business networking, uh, free business networking in your area. You're going to find a ton of networking events that you can go to. Now, my big piece of advice is when you go to these networking events, don't just be a performing monkey. Don't just do trick after trick after trick. Build a relationship up with the people in the room. So ask them who they are, what they do, find out about their business. People love it when they're talking about themselves. So find about who they are, what their business is, what they do, and then tell them about your business and what you do. Um, business networking, and this is a B&I thing, is all about know, like, and trust. 
If people get to know you, then they get to like you, then they get to trust you, they're going to give referrals to you, right? So it's all about building up relationships. And also the other thing it's about, as well as building up relationships, is you want to make sure that you don't overlook somebody. You don't want to go, well, you know what? I'm not going to speak to that person because they're a plumber and I can't see how a plumber could help a magician because it's not what they know or it's not what they do. It's about who they know, who's in their network. And I'll give you a perfect example. One of my best contracts came from a cleaner. I was at a networking event. I met a cleaner and I told the cleaner all about what I did and what I do and the type of business that I'm looking for. And her brother... Um, I think it was her brother, it was years ago now, her brother, I think it was, was the events manager of one of the biggest theme parks in the UK. I was like, oh, wow, that's amazing. And I was like, I'd love to have, a, I'd love to be connected to that person. And she connected us. I went in for a meeting and I've had that contract for like six or seven years now. And that contract is worth a lot of money. And it came about as a result of speaking to a cleaner that a lot of people wouldn't have spoken to because how can a cleaner help a magician? It's not about who they are. It's about who they know, right? Um, the other piece of advice I can give you on networking is give us gain. Uh, if you give people business, they're going to want to give you business. So when you meet people, um, take a genuine interest in their business and actually try to understand what their business does. And then if you can give them a referral there and then, do so. So, you know, you might meet a, uh, uh, you might need a, uh, I don't know, you might need somebody who wants to be connected to landlords and you might know a landlord and you go, well, actually, I know a landlord um, or I rent and I've actually got a landlord. He's a really nice guy. I've got a great relationship with him. I'll connect, I'll connect you. Can I get, give me your business card? I'll pass it on to him and I'll get him to give you a call. Well, now they feel really good about that, right? So, and, and, and if this happens over and over again, they're going to want to give you business. That's how networking works. That's and building up relationships. So when you meet people at a networking event, don't just take their business card and throw it in the bin when you leave. Take their business card and f give them a follow-on call and call them and, uh, or give them a follow-up email and say, hey, it was great to meet you at this event. Um, you know, I, I really hope that I can help you, blah, 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 whatever it may be. But having that relationship and building up that relationship, it doesn't cost anything. But if you do this enough times, you're going to have people passing referrals onto you. And I've had people, I had a referral just before I came to the States, about three weeks ago, I had a referral. And the referral was um, from, uh, somebody I met 10 years previously and they've had my details for 10 years and their daughter was getting married and they called me. There's no time frame on networking. You never know when that person that you meet might need your services. So keep a relationship up with them. Okay, and the final point that I want to make, and I mentioned this in the SEO, but it's so important uh, in the SEO video that I did, but it's so important I'm going to mention it again now, which is content marketing. Start writing blogs. Start producing content. It's so important to produce content because A, it helps with your digital footprint. If people go, right, go onto a few magicians' websites, do a competitor analysis. Competitor analysis is business speak for looking at all of your competitors and seeing what's going on on their websites. Have a look at some of their blogs. And if they've got a blog, I guarantee you there's a percentage of them that started a blog and they haven't published anything on their blog about five for about five years. Or they have a blog entry from seven months ago going, hey, I haven't been on this blog for a while, uh, but this is my blog entry. I'm back. I'm going to be posting weekly. And they never do. It looks terrible. It's almost better not to have a blog if you're going to half ass it like that. Um, but, but if you are going to put a blog together, it really gives you a position of authority. People that come onto your website and they see all of these case studies, these blogs that you've written, it really makes you look like an authority in your area, which from a, from a uh, digital footprint point of view is amazing because that's one thing that's going to be a deciding factor in people booking you over something else, somebody else. But also it drives traffic to your website as well. I talked about this with the SEO, having that 
um, that, that, that content on there that you're constantly producing shows that, well, it, it drives traffic to your website. So not only does it show that you're an authority, it also drives traffic to your website. But then it gives you stuff that you can constantly share on social media and you can constantly share those blogs um, on email lists and a whole bunch of different stuff. So writing blogs is so vitally important. Producing content is so vitally important. Start doing vlogs, start doing videos, just switch a camera on and speak to the camera. And then take that, because you can, right, when you produce a piece of content, you can create multiple pieces of content from one piece of content. So let's say, for example, I write, a, I'm a wedding magician, and I write, a, I write a blog on how, why having a magician at a wedding is such an important thing. And I write this blog on why having a wedding magician is such an important thing. I publish the blog, right, that's one piece of content. Then I email that blog off to my email list, second piece of content. Then I share that blog on Facebook, boom. Then I share that blog on Twitter, then I take a picture and I screen capture it and I, I, I put that blog on Instagram with a photo and I say link in bio. And I have either the link in the bio or I have a link tree set up and the top link is to my latest blog. Boom. Then I, a couple of days later or a few days later, I take the subject of that blog and I turn it into a vlog where I'm saying the same stuff but I'm saying it to camera. Then I share, that's, that's another one. Then I publish the vlog on YouTube. Then I take that YouTube video and I embed it into a blog. And I put another blog up, but I say, hey, new vlog about this subject. And I have a couple of paragraphs of text and then I've embedded the video in there from YouTube. Boom, done. Then I take the video and I take sections out of it and I use it for, you, uh, for YouTube Shorts. There's five YouTube Shorts there that I can take from a 20 minute video. Boom, 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 boom. Brilliant. Those five Shorts can also be used on TikTok. Five TikTok videos. They can also be used on uh, Instagram as Reels. There's five Instagram Reels. They can also be used on Facebook as Facebook Reels. There's five Facebook Reels. Then I can take sentences out of the blog that sound really good and I can make them into graphics with a nice little background and I can put them up as Instagram videos and I can put them up on Twitter or X or whatever it calls itself now. I can literally take one blog and I can turn it into 50 pieces of content. And that is how you make people think that you're absolutely everywhere by repurposing content in an intelligent and clever way so that you're not having to constantly write new blogs, but you're just taking the blogs that you've written and you're using it to create all these individual pieces of content. So there you go, guys. That's another uh, five by five in the bag, another business five by five. I hope you enjoyed this one. I'm not planning on doing these every single week, but genuinely, could you let me know in the comments down below if you want to see more of these? And I will do them occasionally. Uh, I do love talking about business. I'm, I'm passionate about business. I love talking about business, but I'm hyper aware that I don't want to be putting stuff up online that people don't have any interest in. So if you want to see more of these videos, please let me know. Don't forget, if you want to join the Netrix, you can do so by going to www.thenetrix.com. We have the Discord attached to the Netrix now, and Chris James and his team are doing an amazing job, but Netrix is becoming bigger and bigger every single day. Don't forget, you want to see more videos, like the video, subscribe to the channel, leave a comment down below. I'm going to be back again tomorrow. I'll see you again. My name's Craig from Magic TV.